There are some fortunate B'nai Mitzvah students, perhaps some of you are here today, who celebrate becoming B'nai Mitzvah in the fall, when we are reading Genesis and Exodus, passages of our Torah that are filled with narratives and stories that are fun and, you know, easy to make your way into even if you're grappling with their meaning. Then you have the spring students, like Sadie, who, and I, I say this with love for the Torah, get stuck, get stuck with all of these laws, these rules, this legal material. They are sacred to us, they are mitzvot, but they're not always easy to dig into and to create meaning from. So mazel tov to you, Sadie, because you did it. <laughs> and it is not an easy thing. As Sadie told us, this week's Torah portion speaks to us in great detail about how to observe holidays. Shabbat, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Passover, and the holiday that is coming up in a few weeks, Shavuot. There are a lot of commandments, a lot of mitzvot about how we observe these holidays. We are told how to count the days so we know when these sacred festivals fall. We are instructed on what to eat, like matzah on Passover, what rituals to perform, like sounding the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, we are reminded that as we prepare, we must be doing for others, like leaving the corners of our fields for those who are hungry as we gather the bounty for Shavuot. There are a lot of mitzvot, a lot of instructions on how to offer holiday sacrifices, because during the time of the Torah offering sacrifices, that was our form of prayer. And emphasis is given on what we should not do at these sacred times. Absolutely no work allowed. Tucked into all of these guidelines for how to observe the holidays is a mitzvah that stands out. It's one of the laws of Sukkot, our fall harvest festival. Usmach tem lifnei Adonai, rejoice before God. After the solemn, reflective holidays of Yom Kippur, of Rosh Hashanah, we swing into the holiday of Sukkot and we are commanded, rejoice. While the shift in mood might seem jarring, some may experience it as a relief, but the real question is, how can we fulfill a commandment to experience an emotion? What if we aren't feeling happy? Well, sometimes there are moments when we are expected to feel joy at a birthday party, at a large family gathering on New Year's Eve, and we don't. Sometimes the trappings of a celebration, the presents, the fireworks, the fancy clothes actually get in the way of us experiencing joy. We may feel overwhelmed, we might feel insufficient or nervous, we might even feel lonely. So how can we possibly fill this mitzvah? Well, let's look carefully at the commandment itself. The Hebrew word in this verse is not directing us how to feel, but on what to do. Tzmach tem doesn't mean feel joyful, but rather Rejoice, do something that will lead to joy. Usually, the feeling will follow. As Rabbi Sepadin told us during these weeks before, between Passover and Shavuot, we read pieces from Pirkei Avot, ancient pieces of wisdom. One passage teaches us, greet every person with a smile. We are not always happy, but when we see someone, we are told to smile anyway. We know ourselves that that smile is manufactured. 
And we might think, I don't want to offer a fake smile. I'm not feeling it. But our tradition tells us to do so anyway. How come? Often, how we feel leads to what we do, but perhaps just as often, what we do could lead to how we feel. While we can't control our moods, we can control our actions. And as corny as it sounds, scientific research shows that a simple smile spurs a chemical reaction in the brain, releasing hormones that increase our feelings of happiness. And when we offer that to others, they are likely to smile in response, and that brings happiness to them too. The great 18th century Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlav, who suffered from depression, didn't have these studies to prove to him what he knew for himself and taught to others. He said, if you don't feel happy, pretend to be. Even if you are depressed, put on a smile, act happy, genuine joy will follow. Nachman also said, Get into the habit of singing a tune. It will give you new life and it will fill you with joy. Get into the habit of dancing. It will displace depression and dispel hardship. And he said, if the only way to make yourself happy is by doing something silly, do it. This might sound simplistic, easier said than done. And of course, we all know, smiles and silliness will not erase major challenges in our lives or solve the ills of the world. And sometimes we need medical and therapeutic interventions to help us manage and lift our moods. But again, the mitzvah is not telling us we must achieve joy. It is telling us we must continue to push ourselves to take actions that can lead to joy, beginning with what is most simple and accessible. Let's return to the verse in the Torah and read it in context. Take for yourself the etrog of the beautiful tree, a branch of palm trees, boughs of thick-leaved trees, and willows of the brook. Rejoice before God. We are told to immerse ourselves in what is right there around us. The sweet smell, color, flavor of fruit. The marvelous beauty of trees and branches and leaves. The amazing array of shape and texture in all that grows. From the delicate and feathery to the thick and glossy. The poet Mary Oliver, who suffered greatly in her childhood, discovered solace and delight in nature. She said when she entered the woods, she was entering her temple. And she invites us to join her in her daily practice as she writes, Oh, do you have time to linger for just a little while out of your busy and very important day for the goldfinches that have left, that have gathered in a field of thistled for a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender. Their strong blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously, not for your sake and not for mine and not for the sake of winning but for sheer delight and gratitude. Believe us, they say, it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in this broken world. I beg of you, do not walk by without pausing to attend to this rather ridiculous performance. It could mean something. It could mean everything. We all want joy. So why are we commanded to rejoice? 
because it's easy for us to get caught up in chasing joy in ways that will lead us away from it. Planning and working so hard to create joy for ourselves, for our families, get the most successful job, the right apartment, the best school, the thrilling vacation, the most far-reaching technology, the perfect look. Sometimes we work so hard to find joy that we get lost in the effort and find ourselves feeling so far from it. Judaism encourages us, of course, to work hard at life, to build and learn and question and contemplate, but never, ever, ever to neglect absorbing life's profoundly simple joys. Let's take in what already exists, what is miraculously given to us every day. It's not so hard. Savor the smile of a stranger. Hum, joke, twirl. Open a window and take a deep breath. Act silly. Usmachtem lifnei Adonai, rejoice before God. This morning, joy has come abundantly and easily, and we can thank Sadie for that and her little cousin. But when we return to the more ordinary moments of our lives, let's remember this sacred directive, urging us to follow the most basic and available pathways to happiness. Let's not wait for an occasion every day. Let's give our bodies, our minds, our souls, and each other the opportunity to simply rejoice before God. Amen.